Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in Fort Myers, Florida, where it's just pouring rain. It's been pouring rain for a few days, so we're getting some flooding here. So hopefully we'll get through this video. You probably never heard the term cervical cardiopathy. So cervical means related to the neck. Cardio means pertaining to the heart. Pathy, when you hear cardiomyopathy or gastroenteropathy, it just means diseases of. So cervical cardiopathy are diseases of the heart that relate to the neck. So the nerve supply to the heart, some of the nerve supply goes through the neck. So a structural neck issue could be involved with why somebody has atrial fibrillation or they have a tachycardia. So recently we had a client come in from the Orlando area and they said that in one of the ER visits, the ER doctor told the person they have vagus atrial fibrillation. They have vagus induced atrial fibrillation. So even the ER doctor was acknowledging that some intermittent heart arrhythmias could be from the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve goes through the neck. Now, most of the time, by the time somebody comes to see me or comes to the Hauser Neck Center, they've already seen a cardiologist. So the cardiologist is an expert of the heart. So almost all the patients that come here who have dizziness, who have tachycardia, who have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or have a uh, their blood pressure goes down by certain motions or whatever, and they get dizzy or lightheaded, or they get palpitations, or they have atrial fibrillation or some heart arrhythmia, normally the cardiologist, by an echocardiogram and other means, a Holter monitor, they say that the heart's fine. And what they're saying is actually correct, it's just the nerve supply through the vagus nerve isn't so good. So the vagus nerve goes in the anterior portion of the neck and it innervates uh, parts of blood vessels in the heart that have to do with the pulse rate and the blood pressure, pulse rate and the blood pressure. So the vagus nerve runs alongside the glossopharyngeal nerve they're the blood pressure sensors and pulse sensors. It's mostly the blood pressure sensors, but they're basically telling the brain the blood pressure's fine or the blood pressure's too high or too low. So many times at my house, in my office, rest of the house is fine, but in my office where I work, when I'm at home writing and doing these YouTube videos and stuff, the temperature sensor in my room hasn't worked. So one day I go in the room and it's freezing. Then the next day it's, it's boiling hot no matter what I set it to. So basically think about what would happen to the human body if the blood pressure sensor wasn't working or the pulse sensor wasn't working. So that's what can occur when the vagus nerve or the glossopharyngeal nerve which runs again in the anterior neck if that's not functioning properly. And it normally doesn't function properly if a person has lost the neck curve or they have ligament injury in the neck. So this just shows the vagus nerve innervates part of the heart and it does have input to the AV node and the AV node, it will slow the heart rate down. So somebody who has tachycardia, it's likely, it's usually the left vagus nerve. It usually, if you have tachycardia or you've been diagnosed with a new onset arrhythmia and nobody knows the cause, it's probably you have an injury to your left vagus nerve. And the way we document that is with heart rate variability testing and we do ultrasound of the next to find the cross-sectional area of the vagus nerve. And normally when somebody has vagus nerve injury affecting the heart or causing cardiopathy or diseases of the heart, it, they usually have other symptoms too because the vagus nerve innervates the vocal cords so it could cause difficulty swallowing, choking sensation, 
changes in voice quality or somebody used to be able to sing, now they can't sing. Beside tachycardia, they could have bloating because the, they have trouble digesting their food, like the food just sits there because the vagus nerve causes the stomach to make stomach acid. It helps the stomach churn. It opens up the pyloric valves. If you have a vagus nerve issue, often those you start ended up getting digestive problems. This is uh, one of the Hauser tests that we do. So the Hauser cervical test is when you're monitoring something and you just change the head and the neck position and see if the symptom or whatever you're measuring changes, whether good or bad. So in this Hauser neck test, the person is monitoring their heart rate variability. So whether it's an Apple Watch or a finger probe, you can measure the heart rate variability or you can measure even your heart rate. So the, usually the Hauser neck test, what we have the person do is they keep a position for 30 seconds to a minute and just see if the pulse rate changes or the heart rate variability changes. Heart rate variability is the beat to beat variability. So in other words, it's how much variability is there between heart beats. When the heart rate variability is high, meaning the variability between heart beats or EKG on the EKG, the individual ones, if there's a lot of variability, that means the person's vagus nerve is healthy. And when the heart rate variability is low, that means there's a vagus nerve dysfunction. When you stimulate the vagus nerve, look at all these things that happen to the heart. They're good things to the heart. The heart pumps stronger. The blood flow increases. There's more energy for the heart the number of arrhythmic impulses goes down. So you could see where if somebody has decreased vagus input to the heart, it's going to be the opposite of this and could end up with an arrhythmia or a tachycardia. So Hauser's Law is when the etiology of symptoms is elusive, following the neurology leads to ligamentous joint instability as the cause. So somebody has atrial fibrillation, the echocardiogram shows the heart's normal. If you follow the neurology of the heart, it leads to the vagus nerve, and the vagus nerve runs right in front of the cervical vertebrae. So according to Hauser's Law, there's probably going to be ligamentous cervical instability present, which we document by a motion x-ray or digital motion x-ray. And the treatment then is prolotherapy along with optimizing the curve by various exercises. Then when the vagus nerve is healthy, the resting heart rate is low. So like an athlete who's trained a lot, right? The heart rate goes down at rest, the heart rate goes down. So if you notice you're more anxious and you start monitoring your pulse rate at rest, if you notice, like some of the athletes who come in, They'll say, my heart rate is always in the low 50s. Now it's in the low 70s. They know something's not right. And then their exercise tolerance is going to go way down. Like they used to be able to run, you know, six minute miles. Now they, they run an eight minute mile and they're exhausted. So those are all signs that a person has cervical vagopathy. In other words, vagus nerve degeneration from the neck and it's causing cervical cardiopathy or a disease of the heart from a neck injury. And this is a little bit more sophisticated drawing as to how vagus nerve injury causes atrial fibrillation. So you end up with a condition where there's sympathetic overdrive. So again, if you feel like boom, 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 there's all kinds of palpitations. You are noticing PVCs or extra heartbeats. Like that means that your heart's getting into a pro arrhythmia physiology. So that means the AV node in the heart, it's not blocking these extra beats. So why are the extra beats getting through? It's because the vagus nerve input to the heart is diminished. Well, why is it diminished? Well, you, according to Hauser's law is, it's likely that the cervical vertebrae are too far forward. They're putting stretch and compression onto the vagus nerve. So the way to get the cervical vertebrae back is to restore the neck curve and to tighten the ligaments and the muscles in the neck to resolve the instability. And this is a little bit more detailed drawing as to how the 
vagus nerve and the ganglion right are right by C1, C2, and the, the vagus nerve innervates the structures that are the baroreceptors or where the brain sees what's going on with the blood pressure. So if your blood pressure gets too high, right, a car almost hits you, somebody aggravates you, then it's through the vagus nerve that the blood pressure goes down. And we have plenty of patients here at the Hauser Neck Center where they have high blood pressure even though the person's healthy, like they eat healthy, they like their life, and nobody can figure out why they have high blood pressure. Well, some of the times it's because of a neck problem and they have a structural neck issue, instability, and then that's injuring the blood pressure sensors and then their blood pressure goes up because the sensor isn't good. If you want to really delve deep in this, in this study, it's an animal study with rabbits, but basically when you injured the vagus nerve ganglion, it caused so many problems, including coronary artery disease. So I'm not saying like all heart disease or coronary artery diseases from the vagus, but some of the people it could be that. And then the more the animals had vagus nerve degeneration, it was more likely that they, that they were gonna die of heart disease. And you know, the two most common killers of people is uh, cancer, at least in the United States, is cancer and heart disease. And then both of those can be affiliated with sympathetic overdrive or vagus nerve degeneration. And then these are all the different conditions that can be caused by vagus nerve degeneration. And you'll see in there, there's heart arrhythmia, there's uh, tachycardia, but often when you have a vagus nerve problem, there's lots of other symptoms, including uh, mental illness, gastroparesis, trigeminal neuralgia, there's atherosclerosis, there's systemic body inflammation, changes of speech, and then the way to resolve any sort of condition, including cardiopathy or disease of the heart or tachycardia, is to get a pro-vagus nerve lifestyle, which just means uh, having one's lifestyle be very positive, very passionate, getting plenty of rest, being outside instead of inside, experiencing life versus like being addicted to things on the computer or your cell phone, and then having a face-up lifestyle instead of a face-down lifestyle. And then if there's clicking, popping, grinding in the neck, then resolving the ligamentous cervical instability with prolotherapy.